Hi, Kim. I am here. What can I do for you? Can you introduce yourself? Roger. We'll be back in a second. Of course. My name is Kim and I am a driving coach for circuit racing in simulations as well as in real-world racing. I have extensive experience in handling issues generated by driver errors, as well as a deep understanding of car physics and the relationship between car setup choices and handling issues. I am here to help answer any questions you may have regarding car handling and car physics. I have a couple of questions, but keep your answers short and precise, please. Okay, let's see. Sure, I'll do my best to provide concise and precise answers to your questions. I am driving a Mercedes AMG GT3. This car has a front engine. Roger, we'll be back in a second. Great. The Mercedes AMG GT3 is a popular race car known for its performance on the track. If you have any specific questions about the handling or physics of the AMG GT3, feel free to ask. I encounter severe understeer in slow and tight corners. Do I have to adopt my driving technique or can I change something in the setup? Okay, give me a second. Severe understeer in slow and tight corners can be addressed through both driving technique and car setup adjustments. Here are a few suggestions. 1. Driving technique. Focus on smooth and gradual steering inputs, avoiding sudden or aggressive movements. Gradually apply throttle to transfer weight to the rear tires and improve front end grip. 2. Car setup adjustments. You can make changes to the setup to help reduce understeer. Increasing front tire grip by adjusting tire pressures or selecting softer front tire compounds can improve turn-in and reduce understeer. Additionally, adjusting the front suspension settings, such as increasing front camber or reducing front toe-in, can also help. It's important to note that the specific setup changes required may vary depending on the characteristics of the track and the specific behavior of your car. I recommend using a telemetry analyzer like Setup Workbench to analyze the handling problems of your car and make informed setup adjustments. I am very bad at trail braking. How can I improve that? Okay, let's see. Improving trail braking technique takes practice and focus. Here are a few tips to help you improve. 1. Start gradually. Begin by practicing trail braking on slower corners where you have more time to react and adjust. As you become more comfortable, gradually increase your speed and apply trail braking to faster corners. 2. Brake modulation. Focus on smoothly and progressively releasing the brake pedal as you enter the corner. This allows for a gradual transfer of weight to the front tires and maintains stability. 3. Look ahead. Keep your eyes focused on the exit of the corner rather than fixating on the braking point. This helps with anticipating the corner and adjusting your braking accordingly. 4. Practice consistency. Work on being consistent with your braking points and pressure. This will help you develop muscle memory and improve your overall trail braking technique. 5. Seek feedback. Consider working with a driving coach or using telemetry analysis tools to get feedback on your braking technique. They can provide guidance and help identify areas for improvement. Remember, trail braking is a skill that takes time to develop. Be patient, practice consistently, and gradually push your limits to improve your trail braking technique. Can we talk about strategy? Okay, give me a second. Certainly. While my expertise lies primarily in car handling and physics, I can provide some general insights on racing strategy. 
Please keep in mind that specific strategies can vary depending on the race format, track conditions, and other factors. Feel free to ask your strategy-related questions, and I'll do my best to provide helpful information. I have a one-hour race coming up, and a pit stop is required. But normally I do not have to change tires or have to refuel. What should I do? Okay, give me a second. If you have a one hour race coming up where a pit stop is required but you don't need to change tires or refuel, there are a few things you can consider. 1. Pit stop timing. Plan your pit stop timing strategically. It's generally beneficial to make your pit stop during a time when it will have the least impact on your overall race time. This could be during a caution period, when the track is less crowded, or when you anticipate a lull in the race where you won't lose too much time by pitting. 2. Driver change. If permitted in the race regulations, consider doing a driver change during the pit stop. This can provide an opportunity for a fresh driver to take over and potentially maintain or improve the pace. 3. Pit stop efficiency. Focus on making your pit stop as efficient as possible. Practice pit stop procedures and ensure that your team is well prepared and organized. Quick and smooth pit stops can help minimize time lost in the pits. 4. Strategy adjustments. Evaluate the race situation and adjust your strategy accordingly. If you find yourself in a position where you need to gain track position, you may consider making an early pit stop to take advantage of clear track and potentially gain positions when others pit later. Remember to check the specific regulations and rules of the race to ensure compliance and make the most informed strategy decisions. Okay, and what are the benefits of a late pit stop? Wait a minute. A late pit stop can offer several potential benefits in a race. 1. Track position. By pitting later in the race, you can potentially gain track position over competitors who have already pitted. This can be advantageous if you have a strong pace and can make up time on fresh tires while others are on worn tires. 2. Tire management. Delaying the pit stop allows you to maximize the lifespan of your tires. This can be particularly beneficial if tire degradation is high or if you anticipate a change in track conditions later in the race. 3. Strategic advantage. A late pit stop can provide a strategic advantage by allowing you to react to changing race circumstances. For example, if a safety car or a caution period occurs late in the race, you can take advantage of the reduced speed to make a pit stop without losing as much time compared to pitting under green flag conditions. 4. Overtaking opportunities. Pitting late can provide you with opportunities to overtake competitors who have already pitted and are on older tires. With fresher rubber, you may have a performance advantage and be able to make up positions on track. It's important to assess the specific race conditions, tire wear, and track characteristics to determine if a late pit stop is the most advantageous strategy for your situation. Additionally, Always consider the regulations and rules of the race to ensure compliance with any mandatory pit stop requirements. Okay, thank you for all these insights. Okay, give me a second. You're welcome. I'm glad I could provide you with some insights. If you have any more questions in the future or need further assistance, feel free to ask. Good luck with your race.